Imagine if when spring arrived, everything was already beautifully in place so that you could enjoy a head start on the growing season. It's a wonderfully empowering thought. Well, I'm going to show you how. It won't be long before these beds come alive with the promise of new growth. It's a thrilling prospect, but first I've got to get them ready with a spot of general weeding and bed prep. Winter is actually a really great time to get on them weeds because growth is pretty much paused, which means you can get a bit of a head start on those weeds, particularly the uh, stubborn perennial weeds. When uh, weeding out perennials, take the time to really get down to the roots and pull it out from where it emerges as much of the root as possible. That way you're going to get a really good head start on the growing season when they might try and grow back from fragments of root that you leave. Now, um, this area isn't too bad actually, but I have spotted a few weeds in the path, so I'm going to methodically work along and just pick out what I can. The area behind my raised beds is gradually being covered in leaves. They're really sodden wet, but that's actually quite a good thing because it makes them heavier, so they sit right down and won't blow away in the wind. I have plans for this whole area, which include plenty more fruit bushes, and I'll be putting those in in a few weeks once I've finished tidying up, but before growth resumes. The paths between my beds were pristine with fresh wood chips last spring, but as you can see, they've pretty much rotted down now, so it's time for a bit of a top up. I've got a nice pile of reserved wood chips there, which will do some of the paths, and for the others, I've got a few bags of bought in wood chips. I'm also taking this opportunity to mulch around my fruit bushes. Now you can use any organic matter for this. I'm using the bottom of that uh, bark chippings pile, which is a little bit more rotted down already. Spread it to about ooh, an inch or a couple of centimetres deep and just keep it clear at the base of the stem here, because if you've got uh, anything organic resting against it, then it could rot it. So just uh, keep that clear. I've brought you down here to the ornamental border, which admittedly is looking a little messy. Now, all of these dead stems can be cut down whenever, but I'm going to leave it another month or so to the end of winter. And that's not because I'm lazy, it's because there might be lots of overwintering bugs. They love to get right down into the crown of the plant in amongst the stems or even inside some of the hollow stems themselves. If you have a greenhouse, plant house, cold frame, any form of permanent or semi-permanent cold protection, then now's the time to give it a thorough clean. Get ahead now and you'll be all set for all that sowing and growing. The greenhouse here is in a lot better state than it was last year. I'm still going to give the glass a thorough clean and generally sort out the staging, but there's not too much to do. However, let me show you what I did last winter when it was in a bit of a mess. And if your greenhouse hasn't had a deep clean in a couple of years, you might like to do the same. The first job was to brush down the staging before removing it from the greenhouse. In fact, everything was removed from the greenhouse. Staging, old pots, bags, bits of cardboard, the table and chair from where I sew and transplant, row covers, tools, and of course plants, the lot. It's worth doing all of this on a relatively mild day, so as not to shock overwintering plants too much. The next task was a spot of interior weeding, including some ivy that had found its way in from the outside. And then to brush down all the interior surfaces, working from the top of the structure to the bottom. With everything brushed down, I then raked up the debris and removed that too. Now the messy or fun part, depending on which way you look at it, blasting the surfaces clean with a jet of water. You can see that there's quite a bit of algal growth on the window panes, so I used a brush in conjunction with the spray to scrub it all off. The outside of the glass needed cleaning too. Again, I adopted the same method of blasting water while scrubbing with the brush. It's so satisfying to get everything cleaned up and it really puts you in a great state of mind, having cleared away the past year, ready for a fresh start but not before brushing and spray cleaning everything that's going back. And that included the staging, not missing the undersides. We want a fresh, clean start. And finally, it was time for everything to be brought back in. And there we are, all done. I think this deserves a little mood music, don't you? 
nice. I'm also keen to get on and clean areas of paving. The area around here isn't too bad actually, but have a look around here, it's a bit embarrassing. As you can see, it's a bit of a state. Let's get started. I'm going to remove all of the twigs and other bits of organic matter to the compost heap. These useful bits of wood will be put in the shed, any detritus removed away, and then I'm gonna get on and sweep it all up so it's spick and span. There we go, that's looking so much better. I'll give it one more sweep once it's all dried off and then it'll be good to go. The border around the greenhouse could do with something in it. I've dug in some compost and fluffed the soil up, ready to plant. Now, it's quite late in the season, very late in fact, to be planting bulbs, but I found these for an absolute bargain. They're tulip bulbs. I'm gonna pop them in here. They'll be a bit later than normal tulips because they've gone in so late, but they should thrive and add a welcome splash of color in a few months time. You might also like to put in some winter bedding like wallflowers, primroses, cyclamen, violas, that kind of thing. But bulbs are winners because they come up, of course, year after year. When the main growing season arrives, you'll need everything close to hand for all those jobs. That's why it's so important to sort out your tool store and accessories now before it gets too late. I made a recent video where I sharpened and cleaned up my tools and made a beautiful tool rack, which I've now got in here, and I'll pop a link to that down below. This little lot need cleaning, so I'm going to get on and do that now using nothing more than water with a little dish soap. This here is my cleaned and ready propagation station, and it's got everything I need. Clean pots, plug trays, a small dibber for just making holes and transferring seedlings, and a lidded container for my potting mix to keep it nice and clean. One thing I am running short on is labels. And for that, I simply like to use old yoghurt pots. You can just cut them down to size into little label length pieces. Just like that, very simple. And you can use a permanent pen uh, or just a pencil, depending on how long you want the writing to stay on the label. It's worth checking you'll have all of the essentials you will need for the coming months. Take bamboo canes, for example, for climbing crops. Now, they're readily available now, but later on in spring, they often run out when everyone else realises they're running short on them. Be smart and get one step ahead of the crowd. Now, when it gets to sowing time, I'm going to need to have all of my seeds ready to hand. So my next job is to go through my seeds, work out what I've got and what I need to buy. These are kept in a cool room inside the house that doesn't uh, whip saw too much in temperature. A refrigerator would be even better actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna go through them and then order them by month, put in the packets that need to be sewn each month and just drop them in there. I like to test the viability of some of my older seeds as well. So they might be past their sow by date, but they're not necessarily no good to sow. So one way to do that is to conduct a simple germination test. So you take a piece of kitchen towel or paper towel and then just wet it evenly. And then you want to take a cluster of seeds that you can work out when they germinate what percentage. So just space them out over your kitchen towel like that. Roll the kitchen towel up and just pop it into a plastic bag. Now you ideally want to keep them at a temperature that replicate the conditions they germinate at outside. Label up the bag, keep them in those sort of conditions and then inspect them in about a week or two's time once they've definitely germinated. Obviously, if the rate's very low or none have germinated at all, you know that that seed packet is just gonna be good for throwing away and then you have to get some more. But it means that those borderline seed packets you're not quite sure about might have some life in them, so you might not have to buy those extra seeds. And now the moment of truth. With everything pretty much ready, I can begin the very first sowings of the season. I'm going to be sowing some lettuce and starting them off under grow lights to grow on for a very early salad. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. I love it. Right. And a very thin scattering of seeds. 
It feels so empowering to have everything lined up and ready for the new growing season. I feel ready to tackle it now. And how about you? Are you primed for the new season? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're new here, a very warm welcome to you, but please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications on your way out today. Thanks for watching and I will catch you next time.